We just screw with him the whole time. Like, bam, we're live. <laughs> hey, why is my why is my lock screen on? It's never that's never happened before. Not sure, granddad. If you pull down, yeah, Jared's one of those people that's right young. Corner. John, don't even. You don't even know how to record your screen. <laughs> JR's one of those people that's young, but but um, uh, presents old. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. It's not. It's not on, dude. Just but it is on. It. Just keep Portion rotating it. It'll work is out. Unlocked is not locked. So when I turn my phone, it should switch, and it's not. Turn your house sideways. <laughs> in this in this order, the adults on this show. Ooh, this is going to be hard. Sorry. <laughs> It's JR. Take this as an insult if you're at the top. It's JR at the top. Yes, sir. And then Tyler and Caleb. Oh, God. No, no, no. Then I, Peter and Caleb. Oh, no. Then Peter. Then Peter. Sorry, Peter. He has uh, the fake news. That's the most house. times you've ever said my real name in my oh, sorry, entire life. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Jesus, what's wrong with me? Then Pedro. So JR is the uh, adult. Then Pedro. Then Tyler and Caleb. Then... Um, <laughs> What's your name? John Young, and then me. Scrapping at the bottom. Yeah, I'm the I'm the only one who's kept my uh, youth. I still talk <laughs> poop and penises. Oh, I wanted to was be low. A, oh, was I that, a, I was was that a maturity ranking? Yeah, that's like a, a maturity ranking. Yeah. All right, man. That's cool. Yours isn't because you're not you're not well behaved, John. It's just that. Well, God, you did know about that thing getting sore under the tongue. God, that really threw me for a loop. <sighs> oh, yeah, that thing. Yeah, that was weird that he knew that reference. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, big news. Aaron Bridgewater is a new member. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, smartest thing you've done all month, I'm, I'm guessing. Don't be sad, John. John is not sad. He's been, John's on has been on a sad kick for a couple of days, but I think he's out of it now. Do two big pieces of news right now swirling in the space are that no one leaked the workout. No one can say anyone leaked the workout. Everyone and their mom posted it. Like you can't go anywhere without someone posting it. I saw Rebecca Fuslier had a post about it. Craig Howard had a post about it. Everyone is like, I got the workout. Um also uh next biggest thing in the news is Mal O'Brien, our champion who's not a champion, according to the barbell spin. Mal O'Brien to compete at High Rocks Houston. In doubles division, um, does anyone know who – and uh, Kotler with the brilliant comment. Uh, good for her uh, – wait, where is the comment? Oh, I lost it. Uh, uh, Kotler, Underdog's Athletics CEO and founder, she's doing it with herself. It's a bold strategy. I don't get that cotton. It's a bold strategy cotton. What's that mean? Is that it's a, 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 a movie. Dodgeball. dodgeball movie. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, it's a bold move, Cotton. Let's uh, see if it pays off. Who is um, with getting the pays off in there? Who uh, who will her partner be? Cooper Marsh. Oh, no shit. Is it really? Well, he put up on his story earlier on today that he did the workout, and he said, just just in time, or now I'm ready for high rocks with Mal or something like that. Has Mal said anything about doing a high rocks race yet? In that post, she put up it to today. Uh, new sponsorship deal with Ice Barrel. Uh, just in time to collect the check before I quit. Just in time uh, before the High Rocks race. Awesome. Thank you, Pedro. Uh, Pedro, um, I've been chatting with CF Media, I feel, and I think I'm going to go on his podcast. I just want you to know that um, will be the second podcast I've gone on with a foreigner. I hope you don't feel like I'm cheating on you. No, I'm good. Diversity. A dude, a dude it's with only a funny, their arch enemy. A dude with a funny voice. She's so tiny, man. With socks on? Hey, hasn't that, she? Uh, that barrel is actually 15 feet tall, John. Hey, hasn't she been saying in, in her interviews that she's been running a lot? So, I mean, this is, this is no surprise, right? I think some of you guys even came on the show and predicted that uh, High Yes, I, I feel like Spin said this like two months ago. He was like, yeah. she's going to do High Rocks. Spin caught the tag on, on her socials. And further news, uh, Rich Froning and I think Scott Vandersloot and Rory McKernan Traveled down to Proven today and shot a podcast. Action. From you guys pop up from the Mayhem podcast in Which my Which is feed. clickbait. It's not me clickbait. No, it's, no, it's us clickbait. It's you clickbait. It's 100%. And so that's exactly, and it was the clip of him <laughs> saying that shit. <laughs> and like, so it was fucking fed to me. And like everybody been telling me, the algorithm it, and I'm knows. Like, I'm like, not a big deal, not a big deal. I'm like, oh, now it's a okay. Big deal. 
<laughs> clip from you guys pop up from the. So uh, once again, I told you guys that when people know each other well, they can fight. And so what I think is happening, the strategy here is uh, Dave doesn't know Scott Vandersloot. And Scott says the says that comment. And I think he's there because Dave points to him. And so um, when you when you know someone well, you can fight with them. But since you know them well, you can get more time together to, to rekindle the relationship. Right. And so they go down and, and Scott doesn't have that relationship with Dave. So they go down there and it looks like they buried the hatchet and had a good old time. And this is the way the big boys. This is the big boy, way big boys handle stuff. Uh, any surprise here, Jr. That they're, uh, you know, that they can fight, and then you know they didn't even have to. They, they didn't do that cheese dick thing where they took a picture like Rich and Matt did, or me and Brian did. They actually are, are having it out. No, I think that's what you do when you're able to go back and forth a little bit, like indirectly, and then when you have the opportunity to actually get after it directly, you do it man to man, face to face. And that's the mature person on the podcast. Now let's go to the second uh, least mature person, John Young. John, what do you think? Uh, boys fight and then they get back together and rekindle or no? You like that? Yeah. Yeah. No, I I just agree with JR. <laughs> <laughs> you agree or disagree? No, I, I agree. I agree with what JR is saying. I don't think it's that big of a thing. When's the last time you got in a fight with one of your boyfriends and then um, fought it out and then got back together? Yesterday. What do you define a fight? All right, fine. Be like that. Um, okay. Uh, big news today. 24.3 has been announced. Uh, can we pull up the leaderboard? Are there any names that have already... Uh, I know last week, I think Noah was quick to jump into the uh, top scores. Um, can we check out and see if there's any posts yet? What happens, JR? People do this in an affiliate, and then the affiliate owner doesn't have to actually validate it until Wednesday, but they can validate it right away. And that's what populates the leaderboard. Oh, look, and Noah's already in there already. You just have to submit, right? <clears throat> yeah. It shows up, shows up automatically. And then it'll, it'll remain. That's why it's gray. Foundation or not. Yeah. So guys, I, I actually did the workout and I got a uh, seven fifty nine. I don't have a video of it, but I have a judge certified it. <laughs> uh, so how are many you, people? How many people do you think that put in their score and subtract the minute for rest? All Ooh. of them. Oh, you're supposed to do that. <laughs> no, I think you're not supposed to do. No, that. No, it's a part of your time. Correct. It says like on the score sheet, the timer does not stop during the rest. But I'm just curious how many people are going to go to put in their score and they're going to put it in and be like, yeah, but I subtract a minute, right? Uh, are you serious? Was that a problem with twenty one point three? I don't I don't know that it was or if it wasn't. I'm just I'm just asking if you think a lot of people will do it. Somebody's gonna do it. It's a part of your time. I, I bet it's a small percentage. Ten percent. Probably more than the dumbasses that put in their tie break time instead of their actual fucking time <laughs> for the first workers. <laughs> A uh, note, start the timer at go. The timer does not stop during the one-minute rest. The barbell must be placed at least five feet away from the pull-up bar for safety. Hey, why did um, uh, Bryson start so far away from his bar? Any scared. reason in particular? Okay, scared. Just scared. Well, I mean, there's a lot of it. I mean, there's a lot of coaches that would tell you, almost like in the row workout, like, hey, you can put your stuff as close as you want, but it may be smart for you to put on the governor – by spacing your equipment a little bit farther away so you're like hey i know i'm gonna get a three or four second break walking to the next thing and then when i get there i need to get to work on this workout too it's like bryson knew he, that transition didn't make a difference for him he knew he was gonna have to rest he so probably it, wanted that barbell further away right <laughs> uh, can, can we go back up to um uh, number five up there i, I want to read this because this is something i miss all the time and this or was it number five? No, no, it just said five rounds. It said uh, about the tiebreak. It says a tiebreaker will be recorded after you complete five rounds of thrusters and chest to bar pull ups. So that's in the that's before the one minute break. If you do not complete the workout before the time cap, this is your tiebreak time. The athlete who completed the first five rounds the fastest wins the tie. Okay, so that's important. So at the five at the end of the fifth round, uh, everyone should look up at the clock. I always forget to do that. Okay, can we go back to the leaderboard? Um, it looked like Noah Olson beat uh, Jay Crouch by uh, 45 seconds, was it? 44, se 44 seconds. Uh, just, sorry, Tyler, go ahead. Very believable. And that's because nah. you saw Jay Crouch pacing off of Ariel Lowen and you saw him taking his time in between the transitions? 
No, it's just like Noah's known for being great on the bar. What was that games workout? Um, Mary? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, and it's thrusters. He has like, he's kind of built for squatting as far as repping out squats like that. So I'm not surprised. He's fit as hell. Uh, John, now that you see no Olsen's time and Jay Crouch's time and you got to watch Jay Crouch do it, what do you think will happen when Colton Merton steps up to this workout? I think Colton will be 740. Wow, 50 seconds faster. Yep. Uh, uh, Hiller, uh, Hiller, uh, JR Howell. Uh, I would put an amount of money that mattered to me that he's sub eight, but I don't know about 740. Uh, Pedro, would you think about, would you know about five, sub 520 in week one before we saw it after Taylor's? Um, because I think you would have said the same thing about. I would have probably no. I mean, I would have probably said he could go 15 seconds faster, but yeah, that not not as much as he did. Hmm. How many rounds are in the workout? Ten. Ten. Including both both the ten, ten, oh, five so, of the first, five of the second. So you're so if you if he takes off five seconds around, that would be 50 seconds faster than Noah, which would put him at what was Noah at 7:30? For the record, 8:30. 8:30. I don't think he'll take any seconds off of the first part. I think he'll take 50 seconds off of the second part. So 10 alone. seconds, 10 seconds around faster. Yeah. He might be a little, I don't know. Noah usually likes to come out hot. I'm going to go ahead and say right. I, I have no idea. I need to, I hope Noah puts his video out, but that him and Noah are very similar times over the first round. And he's just that much faster in the second round. Tomorrow night. I don't know what time. I want to say 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 1.30 p.m. Is yeah, that right? 4.30. 1.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time at CrossFit Charlotte. It will be the Born Primitive CrossFit Charlotte 24.3 CrossFit Open and CA Peptides Open. Uh, Taylor Self versus Colton Mertens. Uh, Pedro, as our uh, educator here, an academic, uh, Taylor does seem a little quieter, the quietest he's been. Um, is he a little, do you think he's a little shocked? Do you think he's like, oh shit. Like when he saw, he seems a little less bombastic or vocal now that he's seen this workout and he's going up against Colton. Well, that's, uh, probably part of it is that Colton's like, just going to absolutely fucking destroy this. And then the second part of it is Taylor essentially has a new knee. <laughs> this will be the first like major test under stress of that knee. So if I was him, I'd probably struggle to find the confidence I maybe had in week one and week two. But it's also worth remembering he was a massive underdog in week one and he put on a fucking unbelievable performance. He was a massive underdog in week two. He put on a ridiculous performance. He's a massive underdog in week three. I think he's going to shut some people up this week too. Bigger underdog this week or last week? This week. I would, I would say this week. I don't know. This I don't I. It's easy to say after we saw week two. I don't think anybody said he was going to beat Jason in that workout in week two until it happened. Yeah, but there are a lot of people who thought it was going to be really close. A lot of us were. I thought it was going to be really close. You're so smart. Is there any strategy in this JR for Taylor, or is it just does he have to just risk it all right out the gate? Uh, there's definitely strategy, but I, I think Taylor goes into this workout with the mindset of, hey, if one of us is going to mess up, it's not going to be me. So mm. I'm just going to be there to keep you honest. And if you make a mistake, I'm going to take it. Just That's like it. Jason in week two. Yeah. I How? think he, he, he knows himself so well. He's not going to jump up after he's ready. He's going to jump up as soon as he's ready on his bar muscle ups. He's going to put his hands on the ball on the thruster, whether he does a quick seven or whether he takes a big breath at the top after each rep, he's not going to, He's not going to baby the workout, but he's also not going to go about it recklessly at all. Is he as world class at bar muscle or uh, yeah, bar muscle ups as he is ring muscle ups? Yeah, but okay. I think that he's he's better comparatively to the elite field at ring muscle up than he is bar. But I don't think he's he's. I just think that the gaps there are a lot smaller than they are with the rings. Sure, I think okay. Taylor is going to beat Noah's time. Yeah, I'd agree with that, especially if he's pacing off Colton. 
I don't think he should pace off Colton. I think no, as in, like, if he's racing against him, I think his oh, yeah, whatever yes. time he would do on his own, like... Yes. Right. Uh, by the way, uh, thank you for the reminder, Rambler. Don't forget to go to the Heat One app. You scroll up on your phone. You look into it. It recognizes you. It opens up. You click the app, uh, Heat One, and go over there and make your picks uh, for the uh, Taylor Self versus the world uh 24.3 we had ariel lowen going against sydney wells going against jay crouch going against roman krenikoff uh i don't think we could have asked for a better race i, I wish it would have started a little sooner but what a fantastic race there was a lot of uh, jostling back and forth of leadership uh, are, are you did that surprise you at all jr or did you know in that final round that there were going to be we were going to see their engines get exposed no, I, I don't think for those guys, it's it's really an engine workout. It's just, it's, am I ready to jump up and do seven or, or, or am I not? And even you saw at the end, they probably thought they were ready, but you saw a lot of people breaking on that last round. Um, this is a really interesting workout too. And there, there are a lot of coaches in the space that preach this, but them doing seven thrusters and then taking a 10 second break doing four bar muscle ups, taking a five second break and then doing three is faster than doing seven thrusters, resting 20 seconds and then doing seven. So it, going unbroken is not necessarily how you get a really, really, really fast time. And I think what you saw with them is a lot of, hey, I need to wait till I know I can get these seven. So where the breaks might have been longer. And while the discipline might be harder, it's like, oh, it's just harder for me to jump up and do four and then take a quick break and jump up and do three. I need to I need to just wait and do all seven every time. But I think you'll see some people with really, really, really world class times that might approach the workout just a little differently. I mean, John was John was saying it a lot before the workout and then and even after, like, I think the play is to slow play the first five rounds a little more than you want. And for some people, maybe even to break the chest of war, I'm not saying at the elite level, but for people to even get, let's say, sub 12, I think there'll be people who break the chest of bar early and often and can still go sub 12 on this. So you're saying I mischaracterized the, the, the breaks they took as being uh, affecting their engine, but it was re uh, actually muscular fatigue. Well, I, I, I can't speak for them. Uh, <laughs> I don't know many people that are going to come out sub three on the first five rounds. So in that case, yeah, it might've been limited by their, by their breathing and their heart rate. But I think when most people do it, it they're going to get done and say, oh, it was just grip or man, my triceps blew up or whatever. Uh, Caleb, can we pull up the uh, women's leaderboard? Why do you think some of these guys just like Noah, just come out, po do it right away, post their score. Is that just like, Hey, they just want to get it off their mind. Like they don't want to be thinking about it. They see it. They just want to get it out of the way. Is there, is there any other reason why they would just get it out of the way like this? Of the top three, one of them did the open announcement and the other two guys are going team. Oh, well, I, oh, you mean uh, the top uh, four, Amy? Oh, uh, no Seth. men on the men's side. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. It, what are the implications of your open score uh, if you are doing team? Nothing. I just think it might, like you're less secretive. You're less like oh, I don't want anyone to know because like but you're it, going team. But it doesn't affect the team, is what I'm saying. No, no, not really. No. How do teams get so teams for teams the, for their first workout that matters for is the quarterfinals? Like if well, you're on a no, team, there's an no, affiliate. There's an affiliate like team leaderboard now too. Oh, interesting. And they put all their scores together and that's how they qualify yeah. for the quarterfinals. It's, funny. it's still based on a percentage on how many teams sign up in, okay. the, in that region. Okay. Uh, is That's in the order of their scores? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Stephanie Black, 803. Uh, Amy Morton, 1009. Ariel Lowen, 1011. So that girl at the top beat Ariel Lowen by two. That, that might be her no tie way. break time. Tie break time for sure. And Amy Morton's a master's athlete, which is really impressive. I'm sure that's a real time. Oh, what makes you think it's a tiebreak? It's just too fast. There's just no way. Well, yeah, if you look fast. at her total points, it's uh, over 28,000. <laughs> uh, and I just don't think she's two minutes faster than the third fittest woman in the world. Peaking, John. She's peaked. Hey, uh, scroll down a little bit. Are there any other names uh, that have done it yet? No, no, not really. Okay. They would have finished. Oh, uh, yeah. oh Ario Sanders. Let me ask you a serious question that's kind of a weird topic. 
Uh, he, Bryson Del Monte said he shit his pants <laughs> <laughs> prior to the workout. Uh, is is that common for Bryson? Probably. <laughs> he might have. I mean, I've never shit. Might have been fueling up a little, a little too late before before game time, and it's just like just pushed out what he had in there. He too, did what? Too much he caffeine what? too like? soon. Oh, oh, oh! So you think that was Dude. caffeine induced? If that happened to me, I'd be like, "Hey guys, I need to take take five, and then we'll come back." Just we got we got sponsored by C4 at Waterpalooza, and I don't think anybody drank nearly as many C4s as Bryson did that week. <laughs> uh, t- Taylor shows up for Taylor versus the World on Friday. It will be his third week in a row. Um, tell me about the pressure he's feeling, John. Is, is, is any part of him getting exhausted yet? He's like fucking burnout. He's like, "Fuck, I already did too." Take my foot off the gas. This is going to be hard. Like, is, is he feeling the mental stress now? Maybe he's already burnt out. No, I'm I, burnt I out for this, him. I think this is the least amount of pressure he has felt this whole ride. And why do you say that? Because he's not expected to win. He He's playing with house money. He's already kind of proved to the world, like, hey, I'm, I'm the real deal. Y'all just don't know my name. And like you know, destroyed Dallin had a world record time. If you don't count people five five and under, um, and then you know tied Jason in a workout he wasn't supposed to tie Jason in. Like I think he's proven any everything he ever he has to he wanted to prove. He's not expected to win. I don't think there's any pressure for him. I think he just goes out and does his best in his workout and is happy with the he's happy with whatever happens. Whether that means Colton beats him by thirty seconds or Colton blows up and. You know, we're talking about how Taylor freaking murdered the world. Uh, I think he's happy either way. Uh, JR, uh, is he feeling any pressure? Is he getting any, uh, I don't know, uh, competition fatigue? I think, and and I hope he's watching, I hope, or I hope he watches later. But I think he's wondering still, like, hey, I know that Thruster was the last movement that I was going to gain confidence doing at – the second load are heavier. I just don't know if I can really explode out of the bottom and absorb that rebound with confidence. And I think this is just going to show him that he is healed. He is ready to make a run at the games. And this he's going to use this workout as the validation he needs. What you're referencing, I think, is what Pedro uh, referenced, is that his knee, he's, he's coming back from an injury. And that cycling the 135-pound thrusters for 35 reps is going to uh, be a uh, something mentally he's going to overcome in this workout. There's a difference between doing it and doing it without any concern. And I think he will gain that. Oh, I'm just putting my hands on the bar and I'm 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 going. I'm cycling. <laughs> I'm not being careful of. Uh, my my line of action and my points of performance in the L1 and L2 handbook. I'm just I'm just going. I'm just working like out. bouncing out of the bottom on your Correct. thrusters, like just s- sending that squat. Yep. So so you, what you're saying is is that there is no competition fatigue. The only thought in his mind is week three. Okay, this is the heavy squat that I've been uh, sort of anticipating. Here it is, and I'm going to face it in front of thousands of people on Friday night. And and not not that it's heavy, right? This is not like they got to do um, heavy squat, clean and jerk grace, right? At 225. And he's just like, I don't know if my knee's going to hold up doing that load that many times in that short of time frame. It's just, hey, this is a load that I haven't done at max intensity and I'm going to do it. And when I do it and when I feel good, it's going to give me um, a sense of of freedom and rejuvenation that, that he hasn't felt since the surgery. That's what I anticipate happening. Guys, uh, I'm stoked that we have these great sponsors, Born Primitive and CA Peptides, helping us do 24.3 at CrossFit Charlotte. Uh, use the promo code BPOPEN20 to get 20% off at the Born Primitive site. Use Hiller or Sevon at CA Peptides to get 20% off. These are the guys who are getting the athletes out there. Colton Dallin, Jason Hopper, giving them a little money for snacks. Uh, thank you guys for your help.
When they stopped selling the Nano 2, uh, I panicked a little bit because whenever I put on other shoes, um, they hurt my toes. I don't have uh, – un- un- I, uh, when I find a pair of shoes, I buy a shitload of them. Uh, JR's taking his rads off now. JR sent me a picture of his 15 pairs of rads uh, two mornings ago. He goes, hate me if you want. Uh, some of us who don't have skinny basketball feet uh, still need a wide toe box. Uh, the Savage one is that Nano 2 or that Victos, uh, really, but but better. Uh, it's an unbelievable shoe. Unfortunately, it looks like uh, they are completely um, sold out. When 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 Taylor when Taylor when Colton shows up there, Colton's showing up there to take first place in the CrossFit Open. Can we pull up the leaderboard? Is that correct, guys? Am I characterizing that right? Mm-hmm. We are uh, week three. We'll have the. Yeah, I, I don't know. You you could say the fittest guy in the world right now in in Colton Mertens. He has, uh, I think, what what place did he take in the two workouts? A first and a, a first and a, oh, it's yeah. all fucked. It's all fucked up now because people have already started entering their scores. Yeah. Damn. Just, yeah. Do we know where um Colton and uh, so Colton's currently sitting in forty? So he got He's a first. Probably, probably not going to win even with the first. A first and 108 first. Okay, so he's not even in the top 10 now. Yeah, but he wants to win another two grand for sure. That's true. And, and where is Taylor sitting? Um, Better. I want to say he's in – I want to say he was like 22nd. He was in the low 20s. You can just go to overall. We know Colton's in the top 50. We'll find Taylor. Do we know if overall. Colton redid that workout 24.2 when he got home? I don't think he did. No, he's still well, at a 922 like, score. Yeah. Okay, and so Taylor has a second and an 83rd. So these guys are going to finish really, really close in the open. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you do you think, um, Tyler, that uh, Taylor gets a top 10 time in the world on this? He, he has the capacity to, yeah. Uh, will he? It's just so hard to say. This is one of those workouts where like people will be really good at thrusters and really good at bar muscle ups or chest bar. So uh, under over, I'm probably taking him under or over 10. Uh, John, will Taylor do the quarterfinals if he does do great at the open? He said he's not doing competing, but I mean, it wouldn't shock me if he did. I feel like he's just going to keep using that as a cop out and just do all the workouts and just say, I'm not competing. And then, when he makes semifinals, he'll be like, ah, I guess I'll compete. Uh, like it'll be, or, or he's truthfully just not going to compete until he feels like he's at a hundred percent. If I'm Taylor, I clip that bit of JR saying he is ready and he is ready to make a run of the games. And I listen to that on repeat and I try and suppress my daily erection when I listen to it and I gear myself up for a run of the games. Mm, mm, mm. No, you don't. You just let that sucker fly. Hey, I think I think if he's capable, <laughs> I think if he's capable of squatting heavy, then then there's no reason why he shouldn't. If he's not capable of squatting heavy yet, no, he only only he knows that. And I mean like 405 plus, then um, he's probably not ready to do it because he's going to have workouts where there's going to be very very heavy squats, and that's from what I understand. Jr. knows the situation way better, but that's the last thing for him to do. Oh, what is this, Caleb? We're looking at. I this like this. The leaderboard with everybody who's doing Taylor versus the world. So Taylor, Dell, wow. Pepper, Colton Mertens, and Jason Hopper. Wow. So you have Dell and Pepper and Taylor tied for first. Dallin in the open, bro. Damn, Dallin's killing it. A third and a first. So Dallin, Dallin's in the running to win the open. Yes, and I think he's going to. A uh, Jr. Open. JR, is that what you think Taylor's doing also? You think he's just saying he's not going to compete so there's not pressure on every workout to mitigate the pressure? Uh, Yeah, I I think to a certain degree, but I also think he thrives under pressure. I think that he is a gamer and he's not nearly as good in training as he is when something something does matter, especially, not even if, especially when it's pride and ego, when it's one-on-one. What I think he should do is do all of the quarterfinals workouts exactly how he's done Taylor versus the world like this with us watching live. I think that will give him the thrill of competing, but then also will bring the best out of him. 
And I think that if the workouts are all ones he's capable of doing and he qualifies, he'll, he'll do it. Um, you know, if you look Some, at somewhere, last somewhere year, Bear Hanlon is writing a check right now. <laughs> Thank you, Pedro. Thank there was you. a max snatch last year, right? That's a non-issue for Taylor. That's not heavy enough. There was 185 overhead squats last year. There was 145 squat cleans, non-issue. If you look at last year's semifinals programming, if he went to semifinals and did those, he would have be been fine. able to do it right now. Now, that, that doesn't mean that there's not going to be 315 squat cleans. That doesn't mean that there's not going to be a max squat of some kind or a clean of some kind. But I, I told him this last week. I think he should just cherry pick them all. Look at quarters. They look good. You can do them. Okay, do go it. and punch your yeah. ticket to semis. I agree. When the semifinals workouts come out, is it everything you can physically do safely? Go see if you can make the games. Enjoy it. If not, I guarantee you there's someone who would give the world for Taylor to decide he doesn't want to do it, and then that person gets a back full spot to semifinals. Mm -hmm. JR, what or John, what is or any of you, what is the format for quarterfinals? Like, how does that how does that work? Do you have to do all? Do they how many workouts? Five workouts how? over six days. They announce them all at once. You have to submit one and two uh, by Friday, three and four by Sunday, and five by Monday. It's it's that might not be exactly it, but that format is basically more or less that. Yeah, I think you can do them whenever you want. Yeah, I think it's Wednesday to Monday. So I think you have. Wednesday to Thursday, Thursday to Friday, Friday to Saturday, that three day window for the first three. And then you have the next 48 hour window for the last two. And so um, do you think we could do that? Do you think we could um, like fly someone in like Colton, um, keep, keep him for a week and that he do all in stream two workouts a day or one workout a day for six days straight? Can we do that? I think that? that's very dependent on the athlete. I think some athletes, especially with quarters, are like, no, I'm, I need to be where I'm most comfortable. I need to wake up in my own bed. I need to do my warm up routine. I need to use the same barbell I always use. I need because that's it's a different advantage. element of risk. Like that's the, the develop, that's the advantage everyone has. Now, mm -hmm. at a certain level, though, it's just like when Jason tries to talk to me about playing basketball. I'm like, dude, you can give me a kickball and a peach basket. It ain't, it ain't gonna matter with me and you, <laughs> right? So with some, some guys, some guys that are that confident would might just say, yeah, why not? It's not gonna matter where I do the workout. I'm still gonna qualify i think but, jason well, would be cool with it yeah what about jason could we get jason and jr you think to do it taylor i i think jason um, what did i say oh yeah sorry JR. <laughs> uh, sorry do you think we could get taylor i think, and jason I think it would it? i think it would have to be i think i think it would have to be um depend on what it comes uh, out i think it would have to be a collective agreement that hey what's the purpose of this is it to push Jason as much as possible? Is it to push Taylor as much as possible? Is it to get as much exposure and eyes on? Because then it becomes an issue of, well, you got to come to me for the first three and then I'll go to you for the second two. Or like, I don't think either one of them are going to go to the other person's gym to do all five. I think if anything, it would kind of be split. So you don't think that th th it's a doable uh, reenactment of what we did with Taylor Self versus the world? You don't think we can do that for the quarterfinals? I don't know. I don't want to speak for them, but it's a good idea. You'd have to line it up like way beforehand, I think. Um, I wonder about you, you five different athletes. Like, say, what, say that again, John. Sorry, I was looking at uh, say, if, you wanted, if you want to get like five different athletes, like you'd have to line it up way beforehand. Five is too hard. Yeah. I think, of course I don't you're think looking at that comment. Uh, I'd pay twenty four ninety nine a month for quarterfinal coverage like that. I, I, I would like to keep it really simple. Um, I know that uh, the coverage is great for Taylor and great for Jason. I know they enjoy it. I know they like the, uh, doing it for the community. I know uh, it's great for um, for, for um, Taylor to for people who are interested in Sentinel training to see, hey, this guy's the fucking real deal. And I know Jason loves the camera time. I would think that there would be some way to pull it off. I don't know. I have no experience with what you're saying in regards to wanting home field advantage or to sleep in my own bed. Like, I don't, I don't understand. I don't know the value of that or not know the value of that. I, I, as competitive as those guys are with each other and how much they remind each other daily, weekly, what their records are against each other. At that point, it's like, dude, it's not me versus you. It's me versus the entire Eastern North America. Like I, mm -hmm. I, I have to, 
I have to maximize my score. And that's, you know, it would come down to that. A lot of people would argue that if they do it in their own gyms alone, they're not going to be able to get as good of a result as if they do it in the other person's gym and they're racing. So that the argument can be made there for sure. It depends on the workout too. And hey, um, Taylor doesn't even want to go to um, semifinals. He should have no problem coming doing all of them at CrossFit Crash. Let's see where his head's at after after the quarterfinal workouts come out. God, that would that would let's, be something else. Let's isn't it? let's see how many people comment that he's still a bum. Let's say let's see how many people say that he still couldn't make it. Like, because if there's one person in my life that I think is more vindictive than I am, it's him. <laughs> <laughs> meaning, meaning what? Meaning he's fueled by that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. Wow. Uh, Gabe Epsi, uh, Sevi uh, was homeless. No shit he doesn't relate to home field advantage. Douche canoe. <laughs> Bum. Savon, I think you would actually have a huge advantage then if somebody came to your homeless home and then tried to do the workout. It's always it's home field advantage. And stayed the night and, you know, whatever cardboard you're sleeping on and then and then had to do the workout. I think you'd be have a huge advantage. Damn got a point i'm just i'm just thinking of i just would really like to pull this off i mean it's been it's been so fun could you do it in post so it's like oh no no that no, no live oh god well damn. you could leave up lead up to the last one's live and then no, so you, no 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 oh, all right live is what you. makes it i appreciate you being solution oriented but no no this has to be this has to be i don't hey, know let's talk i about think one of at worst case one of the three guys that did the open are willing to do it like worst case one of the three guys you might get them all. Oh, i don't you think you'll get Dallin, them all jason or colton what you mean yeah one of them one of hey. one of the three of those will do it because they one of them will be of the viewpoint that jr alluded to at the start where it's like it's just quarterfinals it's fine like one of them will have that level of confidence and we'll be like yeah fine just camp time we'll just put them you all might in get them all to do it and yeah yeah and all that cross the <laughs> crash and then oh. you just have four man race every single workout, and they just have oh a tournament of muscle. Wow! Oh my goodness! I mean, the hey, way the gym is set out, like all the ropes are exactly the same. They hang from the same point in the room. All the rigs have pull up bars that are the exact same height, where you could, you know, kind of create a square. I mean, all that stuff could be done. All it's just the four bros areas are the same. All of them have plexiglass. Like, it, if they wanted to do something like that, it could easily be done. You you're always line up Colton next to Jason, <laughs> right? You're saying so. You're saying CrossFit Crash uh, can easily facilitate uh, the 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 event. Yeah, like there wouldn't be an issue of um, he's a little bit closer to this than I am, or like the orientation of the where the climbing rope is is more advantageous in this lane or on this side. Right. So I want to go on this side. Like Dude. that's the kind of stuff that people really care about in any kind of competition. Just repeat that again for Bear. <laughs> hey, uh, people so, pay so much for that. I feel like I feel like so many like you just put that for ten dollars and like have the four of them go at it every every quarterfinals workout just over the weekend. And their question I feel is, like, and their question is how much is our cut? Well, that's fair. Fifty percent split amongst the four of you. You don't speak for seven. Huh? That's true. I don't. Bread <laughs> crumbs. Breadcrumbs. Uh, JR, are you suggesting that Taylor... Humble, humble manipulation of words there. <laughs> are you... The way you started that. Thank, thank you, thank you. you. I'm, I, but I pose it as a question. Are you suggesting that Taylor Self would have beat Jason in 24.2 if the workout would have taken place at CrossFit Charlotte because of the home court advantage? Because if it was a tie... No, not at all. Okay. I, mean, I had you in a corner, buddy. I had you in the corner. <laughs> had to take if, a shot. If anything, I think Jason would blow up less than he did. So so then what you're then what you're saying is is that it's not definitive that it would be a home field advantage. You're saying that Taylor could come there and still have some of the best workouts he could he possibly could do. Yeah, and you know, Jason playing collegiate sports too, a lot of athletes say that away games are way more fun than playing at home. They love going to someone else's 
environment where they feel comfortable and hearing the crowd cheer for them and shutting the crowd up. Like there's nothing more sweet than that. So yeah. So it doesn't seem like the type of thing that would appeal to Taylor. If we could pull that off, if we could pull that off, I think I would try to go to Crash so I could do like a live by live commentary. Just, we're I would, I would we're, love just to be there. We we are pulling this off. I'd be fucking times to the book fights if that's happening. We have to I'm be going for sure. To, to oh. Tell me, tell me how it works one more time. The quarterfinals, they're gonna they give the workouts like one or two weeks in advance. How how far in advance? No, no, they'll, they'll, no, they'll they'll get they'll probably get the floor plans on the Monday of the competition. And then a couple days later, they'll get the workouts all given to them. And then they'll decide in what order they want to do them in. But they'll have to submit the first three, like event one, two, and three, in the first submission window. And then four and five in the second submission window. Okay, so that's another hiccup, too. In, uh, thank you, Caleb, for pulling us up. The first window will be Wednesday, April 17th at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time until Saturday, April 20th. And so you're saying in those... 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, they'll get how many workouts? Like three? Five. Five. They'll get them no. all. Yeah, they'll you can do them all in that first window if you but, want but and just submit them. They'll, you know, here's the thing too, though. Like, they, you really have to think about stuff like this. If I'm a competitor and whether I'm in the West or in the East and I know these dudes are going to go on at one o'clock and do this workout uh, <laughs> that, it, that at least gives me two scores that I already know that I don't have to wait on the blind leaderboard for that I can use as information to set myself up for more success. Mm -hmm. And the question is, are those guys going to be cool with that? Or uh, four scores if everybody does. Uh, how, how, but, but don't these guys have a, like a really good chance of just making it anyway? It's, it's 10%. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Well, I We're mean, not putting them at risk of not. Taylor's the it. Taylor's the riskiest one of not making it. How, how, how close, guys. How close it, was Colton it, it, to not making it last year, or Jason or Dallin to going to semifinals? Were they close at all? No, no. Okay, okay. Let me ask you this: um, What about the order of the events? I like I like this that we're doing a live show as I organize this event. Um, what about the order of the events? Is it going to be difficult to get them to agree on the order of the events? Because that's something we need to get them to agree upon. No, because I think no, I, I don't think so. Because I think most athletes and most coaches, more importantly, um, unless it's a limitation that an athlete has that's unique to them. And it's like, ooh, that's the one. Like, that's the one that we need to do when you're really fresh because that's the that's the um, damage control workout. Unless there's something like that, most people will probably agree this is the order you do it in. And so like, there's some conventional wisdom. Hey, th this is the order to do them in that's best. You know, just for instance, um, when they did the other total two years ago, and Jason and Taylor were here doing it, and they did the four rep max front squat the year before generally everyone started with that workout. There were a few exceptions to the rule, but a lot of people did that workout and then they followed it with the, the sprint and then knowing that they could easily repeat the sprint at the end. Mm. You could just give all, if you gave all of them like a veto, like gave all of them one overruling pick, <laughs> you'd, you'd get rid of that problem of like, well, he wants to do this one first and he wants to do this one first. Like you've already used your flag, so you can't use it again. Just for uh, reference sake, um, Colton was 16th, Dallin was first, and Jason was 10th in quarterfinals. And you need to be – in what place did you need to be in to go? Top 60. You have to be top 40 this year. Okay. Uh, oh. And Colton still was not. It's and Colton still, was 16th. And the difference between 16th and 40th, though, like in a caliber of athlete, is, is insane. Mm -hmm. uh sniffing crotches is it is it the week <laughs> after the open if i saw correctly it's a, it's exactly a month after so it's basically yeah, yeah team quarterfinals are first and then today's march 14th and it happens april 17th so about exactly a month wow what do you think the odds of us pulling this off are jr mm. and by pulling it off i mean cooperation from the athletes oh a athlete I, if we just I need thought you my cooperation from like me <laughs> oh yeah, well, yeah, both, both, all, all that stuff. Cooperation uh, from you. I would say for all four. No, we just need one. We'll take two. Oh, we'll take three. For for one, I would say it comes down to the sponsorship, right? Because you got to fly them out there, hotel, yeah. pay for their food, yeah. that shit, give right, them pocket cash. Yes, I would say a ring, diamond ring for their girlfriend, that shit. 
I would say 80% for yeah. to get at least one, to get all four 50 50. I would say for anybody, I would say for anybody in the CrossFit space currently to pull this off would be like, well, fuck, I don't know, maybe. But I'd say for this group, I would say it's nailed on certainty to happen. <laughs> and I'd also say for any brand or any sponsor, obviously Born Primitive and CA Peptides get first refusal, of course. But for any brand to look at this and see like, like to even call a meeting and say, guys, you think this is a good idea is just a fucking waste of time. Like you've proven the reach, the the spectacle, like everything has been proven on something that doesn't matter nearly as much as the next stage. Mm -hmm. Like it's, the, the show so far has been fucking incredible. So anyone that says like, maybe like, no, it's happening. Uh, Pedro is sitting in for Matt Souza today uh, as executive producer for the Sevon podcast. Any questions about bookings or how much money you want to pay us, please contact Pedro White. At, uh, Pedro I take uh, 48%. 10%. Wait, what, what's your email address? It's just coffeepodsandwads at gmail.com. Not very uh, fancy. Uh, you should get Pedro at, uh, Pedro White. I bet you that's taken. Pedro White at gmail. Does your yeah. wife ever call you Pedro? No, she never calls me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, tomorrow night's going to be a crazy night. Is Colton in town yet? Uh, he was at the airport. At night. Yeah, tonight. So I think so. L uh, let's call. Let's call Taylor right now. <laughs> right? Let's call Taylor. Yeah, right definitely now. call him. But <laughs> yeah, let, what I are mean, the odds on this, JR? <laughs> Of him picking up, yeah. Oh, he'll pick up. Uh, let's see, Taylor Self, uh, um, 703. Wait, if not, call Colton. It'd be funny if they were together and say his Taylor name again. Say his name again. Say his name again. Colton, okay. Uh, 703, uh, 939. <laughs> I think we want the rest of that. He did that to me once. Called out like wait, I was like, "Stop saying numbers." <laughs> Most people don't answer strange phone numbers, but Taylor, no one ever calls him, so of course he's gonna answer. Let's see. Facetime Danny Spiegel. Hey, this is Taylor. If you could leave your name and phone number. Stupid. <laughs> I expect if he gets an unknown number calling him, I expect he answers the phone like, what? Like, I don't even imagine him saying hello. He's just already pissed off. Who this? What? <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> that was Why so didn't you great. answer when the other number called? <laughs> Fucking Prescott, Arizona was calling me at 8.50 on a Thursday night. Yeah, okay. Uh, listen, uh, I'm calling you on the other line. Okay. <laughs> that was funny. Christ. What? What? That was amazing, Peter. That was supposed to be for someone who doesn't know. That's what I got. <laughs> what? Hello. Oh, hi. <laughs> very, very cordial of you. Hey, right before you came on, Pedro goes, he's going to answer and say what? And <laughs> you go, what? <laughs> hey, uh, did you pick up the merchandise yet? Yeah, he's he's tucked in safe in his hotel. Uh, and how was that? Can you give us a little like how that went? You pick, like how was that? Is he with his girlfriend yeah. or what's the deal? No, no, he's riding solo dolo. Um, dude, I give him the fucking treat him like a king, dude. It went great. What do you mean? Uh, so you drove you, man. you drove him to the uh, Motel Six. He checked in and and good to go. What are the plans for tomorrow? Um, we're probably going to get breakfast, then hang out a bit, maybe at the gym. Um, I got computer work, so I told him I had some computer work, but not that <laughs> you can't do that like around him or hang out at the gym, but so probably just going to pick him up in the morning at some point. We'll get breakfast and then go from there and get at it. Ooh, hey, it. um, I got a question for you, Taylor. What do you think about doing quarterfinals this same way? Oh my God. <laughs> Uh, it would be an amazing opportunity for me. That would be contingent upon me actually wanting to do quarterfinals or signing up, right? So, so you'll do our, it. Tell them our idea. 
Okay, so let's say you di- let's say you did decide to do it. Would you have an issue doing it at CrossFit Crash? Uh, With the three I don't want to do any of them. What what three other guys? <laughs> well, no, just let's say just one other guy. Any guys? Jason. It's just good guys. Yeah, Jason could be one. Jason's a good dude. Uh, I don't want to spend seven days with Jason. I'll tell you that. <laughs> but you don't have to. Uh, after the uh, workout, we'll get we'll separate you guys. Before and after the workout, we'll keep you separate from him. I think it's more enticing with the four people, Sevan. What do you mean, me, Dallin, Colton, and Jason? Yeah. yeah. Wow. All all at I once, think- every single workout, we'll film everything for the whole week. <laughs> behind you, the scenes. You do realize though, the whole reason I have said I'm not competing this year is because there is going to be something that shows up that I'm not ready to do. So and my, if you're my not, only we'll question. <laughs> that's not that's, that's not how it's gonna work, bro. Uh I mean my only concern is that all that gets set up. I, I don't want it to be set up for me, because if it gets set up for me and then I can't do something, like you're you're What's the you know what I mean? What's the contingency? The there? show's named, it'll, no, it'll just no be, pressure. The, three of them. the show's named after you, Taylor Self versus the World. It's not like it's not a lot of pressure. <laughs> we'll probably leak the workout uh, to the bounce anyway. So. Hey, let Remember, me ask you this: you Do you think your thoughts you on this something. will change after tomorrow? I don't know. We'll see. Tomorrow is is tomorrow a big day for you? Tomorrow's a big day. Personally, just personally speaking. I think personally, yes. It's a big day personally. All right. All right, buddy. Love you. Sleep well. Thank you. All right. Love you guys. Bye. 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 Okay. Uh, JR, let's go back to this 80% thing. <laughs> yeah, I kind of thought he was going to be the easy sell. I'll be totally honest. I think he's there. I think, I mean, he's stressed. This is like a big test for him tomorrow. Yeah. He's going to squat like a lot. Hey, now that I think about it, it must be a big deal that JR even brought it up. Must be a huge, like, JR has, JR has been around him and like he knows tomorrow, um, He's taking the knee out for its first fucking debut in his Maybe, mind. I mean, I mean, you heard that sincerity in his voice. You yeah, heard totally. That. You could totally, hear. totally. I seen him do thrusters like this uh, when I went to Charlotte a few weeks ago, and it, he looked strong. He didn't you look nervous. With, you saw him with one thirty-five, Caleb. I think it was like one fifteen, but it was a lot of thrusters. It was probably about the same amount as this one's going to be. Like he, no bullshit. He he looks strong. I think like JR said, he just needs, like if tomorrow goes well, that phone call is very different. Exactly. God, tomorrow is good. God damn, tomorrow is good. Okay, so we have two big things happening tomorrow. It's Taylor versus Taylor, basically. Like tomorrow is Taylor versus Taylor, and then there's Taylor versus Colton going on, and then there's Taylor and Colton versus the world, basically their scores versus the world. So this thing's gotten a little more complex, more emotional, uh, there's there's a lot on the line for Taylor tomorrow. For sure. Min- it's the kind of story that CrossFit kind of would maybe want to tell. You know, we are. We think of it. We're a proxy for CrossFit. It's too emotional for CrossFit, Pedro. Or like there's too many layers. Too many R words. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, tomorrow morning, I have uh, Lindsay Cantu on from BirthFit. It's going to be a great story. Uh, for those of you who don't know, sometimes I do shows that um, aren't CrossFit related. Uh, this is going to be one of them. Uh, Let's hit her on that one. Have a vagina or a penis, and um, you've ever thought about using it to make a baby, this is going to be the show uh, for you. Even if you haven't thought about making a baby, it's probably going to be the show for you. She is a amazing human being. She's married to Lance Cantu. I don't know if he's still on the seminar staff, but he's been around forever. I want to say he was in like probably the 2008, nine games. Uh, so she will be on the show in the morning. Tomorrow's Friday, right? Yes. We're having a baby in like a month. We, (laughs) I'll be present. I'll be in the room. Communist. We, you'll be watching the vagina go from (laughs) wrinkled to flat. I Um, fucking knew I shouldn't have brought that up. Where are you going to stand? Where are you going to stand? Um, I'll I'm probably kneel. Yeah, so you'll be face. You'll be facing the baby. I'll have my ba- my baseball glove ready. That's, That's right. Awesome. This is this is number three. Fuck! I shouldn't have Get said the that. Scissors, client. Awesome. Okay. Um, and then uh, right after that, uh, we will go all live probably fifteen minutes prior 
to the face-off. Uh, Colt Mertens, one of the best to ever do it, Sevon Podcast favorite, with another Sevon Podcast favorite, and he has his own show with JR every single day. What's that called? It's an Shut internal. Up. No, on Thursdays, Wednesdays. Weekly. Weekly. Every single day. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, also, what did you call it that one time? Yeah, I always want to call it "Get with the Programming," but that's Bill and Chase. No, show. it was something in Scrabble. It was, <laughs> uh, uh, the, uh, the host of "Shut Up and Scribble" and Sentinel Training, Taylor Self. God, it's gonna be good. I, I, I almost don't want it to come because I like. I, I want it to like wait. Yeah, the anticipation. I don't want it to be over. Yeah, thank you. All right. Uh, any final words, anyone? It's gonna be fucking epic. Tomorrow. All right. <laughs> thank you. That's wonderful. That's how I feel. Okay. Thank you guys. Uh, tomorrow, 7 a.m. for the uh, Birth Fit show. And then think around 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 1 15, 1 30 around there. Uh, go ahead and check the YouTube listing. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Love you guys. Thanks for all your support. Bye bye.